hyperparathyroidism. Hyperparathyroidism is basically an excess of the secretion of PTH and it results in hypercalcemia. So what is PTH? PTH is the parathyroid hormone helps maintain the serum calcium and the phosphate levels in the body. Now when there's an excess of parathyroid hormone or PTH it can lead to bone damage, it can lead to hypercalcemia and eventually leads to kidney damage. So how does this happen? Well since the parathyroid hormone is responsible for calcium absorption then an increase in the PTH, the parathyroid hormone, would mean an elevated serum calcium levels, right? And that means hypercalcemia. And with an excess of calcium in the body, it can lead to kidney stones. And kidney stones can eventually lead to renal failure. And since there's an elevated serum calcium levels, there has to be an increase, therefore, then of calcium absorption in the body. And where is this calcium being absorbed from? From the bones, which makes the client prone to having bone problems such as osteoporosis. So what do we see in these patients? Well, we will see signs and symptoms that is manifested by hypercalcemia, such as anorexia, nausea and vomiting. There would be constipation. The patient would be fatigued, would be weak. There would also be skeletal pain, right, due to the osteoporosis. And the patient would also be prone to cardiac dysrhythmia since calcium plays a role in the contraction of the cardiac muscle. What can we do to help treat the patient? Well, we could administer a diuretic such as Lasix, right, to lower the calcium levels of the patient. We could also administer calcitonin or calcimol, which is used to decrease the release of calcium in the skeletal system, and it can also be used to increase the clearance of calcium in the renal system. In the cases of tumors, such as an adenoma, the patient can undergo a surgical procedure, which is called a parathyroidectomy, and basically it's the removal of one or more of the parathyroid gland. Prior to the operation, we need to monitor electrolytes. We need to ensure that the calcium is decreased to normal, right? And post-operatively, we have to monitor respiratory distress in the patient, and we need to make sure that there's a tracheostomy set at the bedside.